So you're in the gym, lifting weights, hitting PBs, doing deadlifts, and occasionally staring over at that massive dude in the squat rack. But there's something missing. You guessed it machine learning. In this episode of Code That, we are going to be building our very own deadlift machine learning application with Python in 15 minutes. What's happening guys? Welcome to another episode of Code That. As I mentioned in this episode, we are going to be building our very own Python machine learning application. Now, whilst we're going to be doing it for deadlifts, you could extend this out to a bunch of different types of exercises. In fact, we recently did a live stream where I showed how to extend this out to different types of exercises as well as form tracking. But back to code that. In this episode, we're going to be building out this app. And as per usual, we need a couple of rules. First and foremost, I'm not going to be allowed to take a look at any existing code or any documentation. If I do, it's a one minute time penalty. Now we need a couple of constraints, namely the time limit. For this particular task, we are going to be setting a time limit of 15 minutes. There is a ton of code to come into this. So 15 minutes is uh, going to be fun. Now, as per usual, we need a couple of penalties. So what happens if I don't hit that 15 minute time limit? Well, it is going to be a $50 Amazon gift card to you guys. So without further ado, ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, let's get ready to do this. 15 minutes on the clock, let's go. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna need to do is import tkinter. So tkinter is a Python library that allows you to build interfaces. And we're also going to import custom ting, tkinter, a ck. All right, then we need to import some dependencies Python. So import pandas as pd. So that's going to help us work with our data frame. So we're going to import numpy, and that's just going to help us with some data transformation. Then we are going to import pickle. So we're going to use pickle to load up the machine learning model. So it's called deadlift.pickle. So we're going to be able to load that up. Okay, so we've imported those and we're gonna need media pipe. The media pipe is gonna allow us to do our pose tracking. We are going to import CV2, which is open CV. And then we're gonna import some stuff from Peel, so, uh, Pillow. So from Pillow, import uh, image, image TK. I did a bit of practice for this one, guys, and it was cutting it close. All right, so then that's that done. And then we need to, from landmarks, import landmark this is just a set of column names so over here you can see i've got all of the different coordinate names there's nothing special in there okay so those are our base dependencies now imported now we need to create the window for uh for tkinter so i'm going to set t window equals tk dot tk and then we can go window dot geometry really need to um do some typing practice say 480 by 700 so that's going to be the size of the window and then we can set the title by setting window.title and we're going to call it swole boy and then we're going to use custom tkinter to set the appearance mode to dark i think this just makes it look a little bit better and then we can type in window.main loop this should start main loop oh <laughs> Uh, all right, and then we can kick this off. So this should give us a little <gasps> pop-up and down the bottom. Uh, cannot import landmark from landmarks. Should be from landmark. No. No. I don't have time for errors. All right. All right, cool. So that's our base app, right? So it's square. Magic, right? Okay, now what we need to do is create a couple of labels. So we're going to have a class label, counter label, and a probability label. So these are going to be the titles for our boxes and then class box, counter box, and then a uh, prob box. Okay, all right. And then we need to do a little VS code magic, multiple curses, boom, 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 equals ck.ctk label. And then we're going to assign window to that and then height equals 120. This looks so cool. I saw Python engineer do this recently. Not Python engineer, one of those guys doing the scammer things. Oh wait, width should be 120. Height should be 40. So this just defines how big each one of these and then text underscore font is going to be equal to font. Arial and then size 20 and then text underscore color is going to be equal to black. And then we can close that. And then we need to run 
uh, dot configure, actually dot place. This just dictates the position and we're gonna set Y equal to, I don't know, like one to begin with. And then we need to do that again and we need to configure. Oh no, why are they tabbing in? Dot configure and we, uh, so configure is basically gonna dictate what we actually, what shows up in those labels. All right, so we've got a couple of issues there. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see that. Okay, and then we're gonna set pad X equal to 10 for these three down here. And I'll show you what this looks like in a sec. So this is going to be the label for class. This is going to be the reps. Actually, we'll call this stage. And this is going to be the label for probability. Okay, and then uh, we need to spread them across. So this should be 160. Think vaguely spread out. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. All right, and then we need to set the foreground color, FG color. Equal to blue. Beautiful. All right, cool. That's looking good. And then we need to spread these out as well. So X, so we'll put them in line with those labels. You'll see this in a sec, 300. And then we're gonna tab, bring these down a little bit. So the place allows us to dictate the position. So if it's height 40, so let's make it 41. Boom, boom. All right, cool, that's looking good. And then we can run this again. Right, so you can see we've got three boxes there. So stage, reps, prob, and then we've got three different boxes. We're going to be able to update these dynamically when we actually build our machine learning model. All right, cool. Next thing we need to do is we need to create a button to reset our counter. So first we need to create uh, a function, so def reset counter, and we're going to grab the global variable counter and set it equal to zero. And then we need to create a button. So button equals ck dot ctk button and then we can basically just copy everything from this particular label and that's going to be our button to button we need to pass through specify what the button is going to be called so we'll just call it reset so that will dictate the text and then we need to pass through what command we want to trigger when we go and hit that button so we can pass through command equals reset underscore counter boom okay uh, and then we need to place it. So place is really important because that dictates where it's going to be. So X equals 10, Y equals, let's set that, that to like 600. So save that, run that, how are we looking? Cool, so we've got a button, reset. It's not doing anything at the moment because we're not updating anything. And then what do we need to do? So uh, button, and then we need to create a frame. So this is going to be a placeholder for our image when we capture it from our webcam. So frame equals tk dot frame and then we're going to specify the height equals 480 the width equals 480 and then frame dot place and then x is going to be equal to 10 y is going to be equal to like 90 i think l main is going to be the updating label so tk dot label and then we're going to pass through the frame to that l main dot place is going to be x equals zero dot zero i'll be completely honest i don't know what i managed to do to get the the frame to work but getting open cv to work with this is a little bit finicky but this seems to work all right let's run this cool so we've got a placeholder so you're not going to see anything just as of yet but that's fine it is working okay then frame then we need to import media pipe so uh mp underscore drawing so these are going to be our drawing utils mp dot solutions dot drawing utils and then we need to import the pose estimation model so mp.solutions dot pose and then pose equals mp oh my gosh mp.pose dot uh, pose and then we specify min tracking confidence equal to 0 0.5 i really want to get to write a type and actually do some typing practice min detection confidence equals 0 0.5 okay that looks Good. Okay, and then we need to import our deadlift models with open deadlift pickle. So we're going to use pickle to open this and then read binary as f model equals uh, pickle dot load and then pass through f and then we need to get our video capture. So cap equals cv2 dot video 
capture uh, my webcams on video capture device three. We're going to set a variable for current stage. So this is going to be whether or not we're up or down in our deadlift. We're just going to set that to a blank string for now. We set up a counter and that's going to track how many deadlifts we've done using machine learning. And then we need um, body lang prob body body lang class. And this is going to be a blank string. So the class is going to be up or down. And then we'll pass that to current stage. So we need two holders. Um, this should be a blank array. So this is going to be the probability of each one of the specific poses. So you'll see me use that a little bit in a sec. So body lang class. Okay, that looks good. And now we can go and create a detect function. So def detect. So this is actually going to be running a loop. So we're going to loop within a loop. So we need to make all those variables global. So global equals current stage, global equal current counter, global body lang class. Sometimes I wonder if I'd be able to smash these out so much faster, if I could just type accurately body lang prob. I want to be like that dude from Harvard that types like 250 words a minute. Okay, cool. So we've got all of our different variables instantiated. How are we doing for time? Oh my God, five minutes left there. Oh, there is no way. <laughs> come on, come on. Okay, think, 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 think. All right, so we need to go and capture our frame. So ret frame equals cap dot read. Uh, then we need to convert it from BGR to RGB. So image equals CV2 dot CVT color pass through the frame. And then cv2.color uh, equals bgr underscore bgr to rgb. And then we are going to process it. So po uh, results. So we're going to pass it to the pose estimation model because pose.process pass through that image. And then we can go and draw the poses. So this one's a nightmare to type. So mp underscore drawing dot draw underscore landmarks. And then we pass through the image uh, results dot pose landmark. I think pose landmarks. Yeah. And then MP underscore pose the results up here. And then MP dot pose. So we pass through the pose connections. And then we need this thing called a drawing spec. So MP underscore drawing dot drawing spec. You don't get type hints for um, the media pipe stuff which is a bit of a pain all right so then we specify color equals and this is just an rgb key so 00255 and then thickness thick, she thick. thickness equals two and then circle radius so this specifies how big or small the circles are going to be in our when we draw our pose estimation model so i'm actually going to be doing that all right and then we need to specify the color as 250 or just change it up Cool. So that's that done. And then we can go and so then we need to try us and then accept. And then so that's going to be where we do our detections. Then we want to make a update to our image. So L main, sorry, image equals what is it? What is it? So we're going to slice it. So we're going to cut down our image size. It's going to be equal to image. And then we're going to grab 460 pixels or 60. And then we're going to convert it to an array. So we can type in image or create a new variable image array equals image dot from array. So this is from pill or pillow. Pass through that image. And then we're going to convert it into a way that we can use it with tkinta. So we can go image tk dot photo image pass through our image array and then we need to pass through l main dot image tk i'm going to pause it if we manage to get this done image uh image tk equals image tk and then l main dot configure image equals image no image tk and then l main dot after oh, 10 and then we're gonna loop through okay all right and then we can run detect here i'm gonna pause it oh my god we have a minute 40 left 
All right, so this is running it. So I'm going to pause. So this should be the first phase. Ideally, we should get some pose estimation happening here. All right, cool. So that's at least the first bit done, right? So I've captured my face. You can see that we're actually doing pose tracking. We're looking kind of okay, right? But there's a minute 40 to get the stage reps and probability counter working. So you can see that we've got all these key points, right? So we're going to be passing these key points to the deadlift model. So we'll effectively flatten them into a big list and pass them to be able to track our deadlift. So if I actually bring the green screen down and start doing deadlifts now, you'll actually see that this is actually doing hardcore pose estimation. Hold on, let's take a look. You can see it's tracking me kind of okay, right? All right, but we've got to finish this. So now what we need to do is we actually need to go and take all those landmarks, pass them through to our deadlift model and make detections as to whether or not we're going up or down. Okay, all right, let's close this. All right, minute 40, <laughs> minute 40. Come on, we can do it, we can do it, we can do it. All right, let's go. All right, so then we need to finish up in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a row and we are going to go at four res in results dot pose landmarks landmarks dot landmark and then we are going to unpack this into a subset of arrays so res dot x res dot y res dot z i always used to screw this up when i was doing practice visibility i spelled that wrong so many times and then we're going to wrap this in a numpy array numpy array and then we're going to flatten it and then convert it to a list. And then we're going to pass it through to a pandas data frame. So x equals pd dot data frame. We're going to pass that row in. And then this is where the columns come in. So columns equals landmarks. Uh, yeah, it's landmarks. It's from, we imported it right back up there. All right, there we go. So that should create our data frame. And then we need to, the so body length prob equals model dot predict Robert. So this is a scikit-learn model. We're going to pass through X, grab the first value. So body lang class equals model dot predict. Pass through X, grab the first value. Oh no, I don't want to run it yet. No. Stop. Quit. All right, cool. Cool. So those are our uh, detections. And then, so that's, then what we need to do is implement some logic. So if body lang class equals equals down then we're going to set the current stage to down so then body lang prob oh, oh we're getting there <laughs> all right yeah, so that's the 15 minutes up all right so we clearly didn't make it but doesn't matter let, let, let's wrap this up but i don't actually think we've got that much left we've got maybe like i think 10-ish lines all right so body lang uh, anyway all right well that's gonna be the uh We'll, we'll save it for the, the Amazon gift card. All right, we'll do it in a sec. So body lang prob and then body lang. Ah, oh, man. Uh, all right, so then we're going to, if we detect the classes down, we're going to, and the probability is over 70% that we're going to set the current stage equal to down. We're so close, guys. Uh, elif, and then we're pretty much going to copy this line here. Oh, let's write it. So if current stage equals equals down and body length. So if we're now detecting that we're going up and the probability is over 70% or we'll set it to like, yeah, we'll leave it at 70% for now. Then we're going to set current stage equals to up and then we're going to increment the counter. So counter plus equals one. All right, cool. So that's our detection logic. Then we just need to go and make the updates to our different labels. And that was pretty much it. So counter box equal uh, dot configure text equals counter and then prob box dot configure text equals uh, body lang prob. Uh, we actually need all of this. So that's going to give us the highest probability value and then class box dot configure equals text and then we are going to pass through the current stage i think that was it save let's run that Bro, 
crossed fingers. All right, cool. So we're getting something there. We're not getting our probability pass through. So there's an issue there. So it should have detected the probability. All right, so we're clearly making detections. That looks like it's working fine. So we've got an issue in here. The so MP, so res.x, res.y, res.z, B I S I B I L I T Y. Or res in results dot pose underscore landmarks dot landmark dot flatten dot to list. Then passing the row, we're then passing x. Let's just print the error if we get an error. Ah, oh, we were so close, guys. Something wrong with visibility? B I S. Ah, oh, I've spelt it wrong. Hold on. B I S I. Ah, oh, man, I was saying I was getting that error wrong. In the... <laughs> okay, I think I just had this spelt wrong. So I had vis visibility instead of visibility. Cue the nervous music. All right, cool. So you can see that we're getting the probability there. Stage is not being set. That's kind of weird. Pipe, uh, I've spelt this wrong. Hold on. Get rid of that extra D there. Save that. We're not. Oh, there we go. All right, cool. So you can see it. So we're now in the stage up, down, doing reps. Woo! You can see we're now estimating down. This is up, down, up, down, up. Chair's covering it a little bit. Let me move this. And then we can go and hit reset. You can see that's resetting the rep counter there. Not too bad. So not quite 15 minutes, so we clearly didn't make the time limit, but uh, I thought we did okay. Anyway, here's the Amazon gift card. Whoever gets it first, it manages to claim it, claim it. I'm getting tongue tied now from trying to power through this. Anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I'll share all the code as well as a bunch of the other modules inside of the GitHub repository in the description. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe, and tick that bell. And if you've got any additional ideas for code that, please do let me know in the comments below. Hopefully you're enjoying this series. I love making them. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.